Hello, I'm Ronnie Eldridge. Welcome to Eldridge and Company. My husband's name is Jimmy Breslin. He's a writer, and I sat with him last week in the stadium field in Denver while Barack Obama spoke to a huge, hushed crowd. Even Jimmy was quiet, and believe me, that is most unusual. But today he's my guest, and I hope he'll talk. So will you talk? Hello. Hello. Yes. What, did you, what were you thinking while Obama was speaking? Well, in the afternoon, I had lunch with over, sat over coffee mostly with Branch Rickey, the grandson of Branch Rickey, who maneuvered Jackie Robinson into baseball. So he was talking and saying that his sister and his mother still remember leaving Ebbets Field, which was the baseball park where the Brooklyn Dodgers played, and Robinson was the first man of color to be, play in the major leagues of this country. Of any color. The national other than white. Right. Supposed to be the national pastime, all white. Yeah. At any rate, he played. They were leaving Ebbets Field, and it was crowded, and the cab driver was cursing the blacks who were getting in the way on Bedford Avenue, the main street outside the ball game. And he, Did they, they was, especially went to see Robinson They play? went to see was Robinson playing. That's what they were there for. And the the uh, a crowd of mainly people of color just at this moment crossing the street and the cab driver began yelling and about color and cursing and the mother who had brains apparently they all do but she knew one thing she told the kids don't worry don't listen to it it won't last forever and it didn't right. so it was sitting in the uh, in the ballpark and like a, a, a crystal of air went off in the silence. I did remember this, and I started remembering a, a lot of things that, that produced this moment. And uh, uh, it was it was it was, it was Ricky, awesome, as they would say. Awesome, wasn't it? I overwhelming. Guess, I don't use those words. I know you don't, but they, that's they the killed current word. those words. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they had ramp up. That was another <laughs> word. I don't know what that means. I know what a ramp is. That narrative. narrative, I thought there's something you're right. I didn't understand what they were doing. I know that uh, it produced the most memorable scene in uh, drama in that sports and probably this nation has produced when her, his grandfather, Lance Ricky, when we were talking that day, his grandfather had Robinson come in from Chicago believing it was going to be for some black league. Sukforth uh, was a coach that brought him in uh, from Maine, but he was out at Georgetown, which L Ricky loved. He was an education snob when it came to that, because baseball players are all grammar school products at best in that time. And he asked him, do you know why you're here? And he said, they're playing a black league. So he said, no. Yeah. And that was overwhelming. That was it. it still gets you affected, doesn't well, it? Oh, it's affected, yeah. 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 Should we tell people that you're writing a book about oh, this? forget about it. But it's so appropriate to yeah. the time. Sure. I mean, you also spent a lot of time down south during the Civil well, Rights Movement. Yeah. And um, to, to compare what's happened. Well, I was years. sitting there. Well, then let's face it. I, I, I talk about that. I was sitting there, 85,000 people, not a sound in the, in the place. Unheard of. Un uh, nothing heard. Uh, you could hear anything drop. Nobody dropped anything. It was quiet from the up, the last row of the upper tier down to the grass. No sound. And uh, I, I was st just the thought of the past. And the past was like in Lynchburg, Virginia. They uh, would uh, bring them into court. They made all these arrests, what they call them, lunch counter arrests. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're gonna, you're gonna. Drugstore counter, and they come in with big uh, uh, police dogs looking to bite you while you're sitting on a stool. And then they arrest them, they bring them by bus to the court, and then they go to the back of the court to bring them in. You had to stand by the bus they came in on, or the police trucks, and count the heads and make sure you don't miss one being brought into court. And these. Uh, but but young you counted before when they put them on the bus. You just counted yeah. every place you went because they were all black, a few scruffy, the usual scruffy whites. They were West Siders. Come I'm, on. <laughs> and they're going in the back of the court, and you counted to make sure the kid would look at you and say, I can't even give you the comfort of my eyes. Just leave me alone. I count. Then you go into the court, 
I sit down, and as they're brought out to appear before the judge, you count it again. And if there were 125 went in on that bus, make sure there's 125 come into that courtroom. If there isn't, somebody's missing. Where is he? And then you got the trouble. I know you asked a lot of people who were there if they thought that most everybody was aware of this momentous oh, occasion. No, they Do you think be. they were? They couldn't be. Well, you mean you have to have the history you had to appreciate it? No, I just, I don't know. I guess they could be, but it, I mean, when he stood up, I asked you what time it was. It was 8.15 at night when he stood up and said, oh, to accept it to yeah. be the president. I'm trying to remember who would, who would, uh, who would in that huge crowd understand what it was. Well, people it's, certainly don't the, it's certainly the people of color, the African Americans. Oh, well, they don't count. I'm talking about oh, come the, on, of course they count. Well, they, they were... It was a yeah. whole new... Th they were in shock from the yeah. go. I'm talking about just yeah. the, the rest of the crowd, and I, I, I don't know. Well, we've talked also about r race <clears throat> and how it, important it is yeah. to different people. Yeah. And don't you think that younger people... Oh, that's a joke. Yeah. What? My sister-in-law was just saying that. She's from Glendale, Queens. She's living out in West Hampton where the old people have McCain signs out already. She was saying, everybody in our old neighborhood, Glendale, Queens, 74th Street or Myrtle Avenue, today they're young and they go into Manhattan to work. She says, they don't even see colors. Yeah. That much of a change. Yeah. So this might va validate the entire thing. Old people are stuck with these old freaking rules and ideas. Young kids, I, obviously, if they... They're going out into the world working. They know it's a diverse society, and they don't seem to care. And they go ahead and work. And their families also are diverse. There were more couples in oh, right. in Denver. Oh yeah, you could from uh, different places. <clears throat> it's amazing, right? Unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, for the yeah. under the L Liberty Avenue or something, walking it on a Friday night. Color? No. Mixes? No. But you're afraid that race is going to play an important part in this It's election. because you're going south of Newark. It's another world. Well, are, we don't know that yet. Well, do we? Obama should be 30 points ahead in the poll if you're a realistic assessment of this race. And he isn't. He isn't uh, at times he's been one and two points ahead. Well, what's keeping that poll down? The well, wind? don't you think also part of it, I mean, I know the pollsters say they accommodate I don't for trust them. the cell phones, yeah, yeah. you know? How? Well, How? that's what they say. They adjust their polling. But the well, fact is... Well, they've got to lie about their polling, otherwise they won't have their yeah, businesses. I, I, I told you when I was in a Sprint store the other day, a big Sprint store, and I asked the manager what percentage of their customers have landlines, he yeah. said 25 percent. So the poll, the polling people aren't calling people with cell phones. They're okay. just calling landlines. Yeah. And, of course, we know that Obama's strength is with the younger people, so we don't know what the, what the real things are. Well, the strength is under... I don't like under, the polls because it takes thinking. all the excitement out of things. <laughs> well, I don't think they're right. Yeah. I think they're crazy, but they, I, but I they don't know But they are right sometimes, and they're wrong sometimes, right? They were right with the guy in California. They went to uh, run in, what was his name? No, they weren't right with that. Bradley. Bradley. Well, they were, they were right. They were, the African-American mayor of Los Angeles, who he was way ahead in the He was way ahead. He woke government. up. He's 40 points behind. And that's what everybody's afraid of this time, right? Well. It, ha that was quite a while ago, though. Yeah. And it's I would trust him. My, my, so what my sister-in-law says I would trust, not because she's family, but she's got a, a sense of the streets. And she says they just don't care. How did this convention compare? I mean, you've been to a lot of conventions. Yeah. This was, and I, and I was a delegate to this convention. Yes. Um, and so. I've been a delegate before. Yeah. Uh, but the one convention that I've been to that really, you know, still had undecided yeah, yeah, things yeah, was the yeah. McGovern con the convention yeah. in 72. Yeah. You were there, I remember. You were covering that. 92 to 2, It's a long time. Years shows ago. how old we are. Oh, right. Geez. It's all right. But, uh, no, it isn't. <laughs> That's 35 years, baby. Come on. That became the big thing that we can't have that again, because there was a floor fight, and McGovern didn't get to speak on television yeah, until later. And yeah. since then, also, in the older days, I always talk about in the olden times, and it reminds me that when I was really young, yeah. a man at CBS where I was working came in and said his son asked him, if when, in the olden days when he was young, did he live in a cave? So <laughs> it's always in my mind. Anyway, in the olden days, the networks used to cover the conventions gavel to gavel. Yeah, yeah. 
Yep. Then they abbreviated it. Now, now ch uh, cable covers yeah. them, basically. Well, why if C-SPAN is the wonderful one to watch. Yeah, but now. why, if I had a big commercial network, would I cover this thing? Because that's what I was getting to the Deadly. point. Deadly. They're, they're no longer contests. No. They're really spectacles. Yep. They're, you're a, I'm, I felt like a spectator yeah. at a, an incredible show. Yeah. There was no doubt about it. Mm. It was an exciting show, but it was as a spectator. Mm -hmm. And they did a very good job, I guess. At what? At, 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 at scripting? Creating a spectacle. It wasn't, it wasn't creative. It was just... Yeah, but you were touched by it. Come on. By you Obama. Were you were impressed by Bill Clinton. You were. Why? Because he, 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 was, he was selling his wife? Anyway, you were impressed with his speeches. and you, John Kerry's speech, you were impressed. It was, if he'd made that four years ago, it might have been different, yes. Yeah. So now what do we... Kennedy was a big speech, right? Yeah. Kerry. That, right. Clinton. Why do, I want, why do I want to go all that far to Denver to hear speeches? And, and the high altitude. Yeah, I can And the lines. Them. Yes. So I remember the first day we were there... Yeah. This group of anarchists, or whoever yeah, they were, yeah, they yeah. called themselves anarchists. Yeah. It wasn't a large group. It sounds like there was a no, much larger group in St. Paul, right? Yeah, I guess so. Because they're saying they were, didn't yeah. they say there were thousands, thousands in St. Paul? There weren't thousands in Denver. But it was shocking, wasn't it, to see the police in Denver? With the guns. Big guns. Yeah. Big! And the black helmets and the pads and their whole riot and gear. And they, they were not from Denver itself. A lot of them were from small towns out around Colorado who had been drawn in to work in uh, Denver, and they couldn't wait to shoot somebody. Yeah. You know, the, that, it, well, it was, it was very provocative the, also. Yes. You just see it, and you get, you, yeah. you're really um, yeah. in a, shocked about yeah. it. I thought it was bad. We missed the one time that they did have the spray. Remember, no, that was at night I, when they locked I, down the yeah. thing. But the presence of the Secret Service <laughs> and all the lockdowns. See, Secret Service are a joke. Forget about them. They really are. Well, they're not else? necessarily a joke when they're around the candidate, are they? They lose all the time. Somebody shoots, he dies. Secret no. Service run around wringing their hands. They don't. You watch them, and, and they are very intent. You think they may be a little too old, but they're very intent on... on well, Brad Schricke was saying that the grandson, we were rating them, their ability to move, and he said, I kind of like an experienced hand around the guns, and I say, I like, I like a 21-year-old with fast hands. So we were just arguing about it. Well, now you may have uh, a vice president who, uh, who likes guns. She, she likes to shoot. <laughs> She'll shoot back. That'll be the first campaign they'll shoot first, maybe. It's, uh, so what do you think what? about all this? What do you think's going to happen in this race? Obama should win easily. I mean, everybody was saying uh, after they got a look at her that it turns the thing upside down. There's no contest. I don't believe in that. I, I think the color will linger good until the end. You don't think that people will look at McCain and think that he made a very rash decision with very little information and he's, transpose he's, that he's to white. other policies? He's white. You How can he do wrong? Even if he's that way? How can he do wrong? But you wrong? just said before that you thought racism I was... Think, yeah, I think it's... Well, it isn't what it was when we came around. It's a great, great, great improvement. But it isn't what, I already said that the poll should be 30 points, and it isn't. You know that. Tell us about, let's talk a little bit about the convention, because it was quite a, an exercise. I just did, I saw. No, I'm oh, just talking oh. about all the security, all the lines, all the waiting, but the excitement of all these people who come, because these are people who have really participate in the political process. Yeah, but there wasn't the excitement of a roll call vote where people were... Right. We didn't even know that there was a roll no, call I vote that know. afternoon. No. The New York delegation was almost empty yeah. because the roll call vote came at 3.30 or 4 o'clock yeah. in the afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. And the fact was we had already voted. Yeah. I didn't even realize we had already voted. Yeah. You know, every morning we had to line up to get our credentials. Yeah. And you had to hustle to get your credentials. Yeah. And it was very difficult because the press was way out at the Pepsi yeah, Center. Yeah. We went out there the first day to get yeah, your credentials. Yeah, yeah. We couldn't get near the place with the Secret Service yeah. and everything else. You couldn't get in to get them. They were in there. You had to have uh, cell yeah, phone numbers. Yeah. It was a mad scene. So we walked to the Pepsi Center, which was a very long yeah, walk. Yeah. And we learned how to get back. I think we took a cab. That was the best <laughs> way. Um, but for the delegates, every morning you had to line up mm. and get your credentials for that day and yeah. sign for them. Yeah. 
people who came just as observers or because they liked and they wanted to come mm -hmm. had to stand around all day trying to find it. On the mm -hmm. other hand, big contributors were always taken care of. Yep. That's yep. what's happened, I think, in politics more than ever before, is the separation between the workers and the, the people who finance mm -hmm. the operation. Mm -hmm. And I think that's too bad, because the people who really do a lot of work mm -hmm. um, are, are sort of it, left behind. The finances should have had, they give you cards you wear, big tags to say press. Uh, special guest. Special guest, delegate, everything else. They ought to have one card, say crook. No, come on, they're yes. not, uh, that, that's ridiculous. Anybody giving big money to a political candidate is giving it in order to get his hand inside the safe. Well, that and that's the only reason. I don't think that's true. Why? What it, a, it is, it why means, would you give money to one of these? Why would, there's been Cain's picture. Why would I give him $50? Well, I don't know why you would give him money. I wouldn't give him a quarter, except if he won, and he's going to let me put my hand inside the safe somehow. Then I'll go for them. Well, of course, a lot of people give money and because they want to be Obama. close to the right. What am I going to give? Because well, we had invitations to different parties that said the, the one invitation was wonderful. It said there have been informal discussion on the back of this very nice invitation. Yeah, yeah. There have been informal yeah. discussions with the House Committee on something, yeah, yeah. and uh, they have informally approved this. And if you want to yeah, talk to them right. further, call this number. Yeah, and yeah. then the next paragraph was the Senate Ethics Committee has approved this. <laughs> this yeah. party because of all the new ethics laws and everybody is so constrained or afraid of breaking I don't believe a word of it. It's a lie. All right. Anyway. We were, I was going in a one uh, and the guy said to me one post to something. He said, now, you know, this is off the record. You can't write anything about this. We don't say anything about this. Their party. And inside was a, was a, a hurricane. <laughs> Broads, whiskey, everything in the world. No, but we didn't go to parties because the thing was so late. Yeah, but the one I went to, you that's did. what it yeah. was. Um, so you get your credentials. Yeah. You, the, the delegation had a breakfast before, so everybody yeah. from New York had breakfast in the yeah. ballroom at the yeah. hotel yeah. we were staying in. Then you stand in line and get your credentials. Then you have a few hours. So you can go to a caucus, yeah. but it's not a caucus in the caucus sense. Mm -hmm. We went to the women's caucus at speeches. Mm -hmm. And it was a long walk to that convention mm -hmm. center. And then you come back, and then you have to get on buses. So everybody worries about how they're going to get lunch. You, get out, you have to stand in line to get on a bus. You have to show your credentials. You then ride to the place. And then they leave you a mile away, and you have to walk. And you walk mm -hmm. all these crazy ways because they've got all this security. And then you get into the place, and you're thirsty. So you have to pay $3.5 for a bottle of water. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and uh, then you have to get there early to get seats. I mean, when I went to the um, field, What's it called, the field? Invesco. Invesco. When I went there, I got there at 1.30. Oh. I saved two rows of seats because mm -hmm. we had a group of delegates that usually sat together. Yeah. And we sat there in the sun until the thing started, which was at about 4.30 or 5.30. So it's, um, and then you have to stand in line to get home, back to your hotel. Yeah, but you still had at 8.15 at night a black guy stand up. Yeah, you did. It was all worth it, I think. True. It was a very exciting thing. Also, uh, you had to be aware of the, uh, of the uh, fragileness of the situation in that just before uh, we got there, a woman from the Miami paper called. She's covering the trial in Guantanamo. They got 250 uh, people from Afghanistan and uh, Iraq as defendants. In the United States, and they've been holding them, them for how many years? Holding them, for four or five. and a military, uh, <clears throat> a, a military rule that's going to run the trial. And she said she went down there as a, a as a reporter, and she had to take a military plane from Washington. And when she got to uh, Cuba, they had people escort her to the courtroom, courthouse, and escort her back at all times. And she couldn't talk to anybody. Nobody was allowed to talk. The uh, military prosecutors, all of whom apparently come out of a, a school for military prosecutors in the University of Virginia in Charlottesville. They're running it. I mean, no, no wonder I'm making the, uh, the uh, convention, the standing up so important to get somebody elected. We're, we're listening to her talk. We're one step away from Russia. It's so, um, it's interesting also that the platforms have no arguments anymore. No, nobody got the up Republican Party has 
definitely settled on its its pro-life position. Well, definitely, it's support of the war, everything. And the Democratic Party has how totally you have settled a on its opposite how, views. How can you have there a pro-life be... position when you're getting people killed in Iraq? Where, where's your well, pro-life position? They seem position to be there? able to do it. Don't it they? is. Why? Do you get the guy killed? <laughs> we got one coming home from Queens here yeah, today. Yeah, you have Dead. a vice presidential candidate whose son is going to Iraq. Yep. Who is? Uh, and what's he going to Iraq for? Because I think he was a little. He was having a behavioral was, problem. Was, I think he had a personal problem with the law here. And they so uh, they encouraged him to join the army. Oh, that's that's. I could see it. You join the army, and then maybe he gets wounded, and she could. Get elected with the wound. That's pretty cynical. Yes, it is cynical. You know why? Because it's true. But you don't believe that people should be talking about her private life, or do you? Oh, I don't want the, the young woman who's pregnant. That's none of your business, my business, or anybody's. I don't see how they can bring that up. Well, is it anybody's business that she's got five kids, one of them a baby oh, with Down okay. syndrome? Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, go ahead. A daughter who's 17 and pregnant. A mm -hmm. son who was 18 and joined the army, and now it comes out because he, they were having some problems. I'm not saying that he was forced to join the army. I was. And she's going to run for vice president? Is that? I don't know. She had four children until the age of 40. She went over the line in an area where, uh, I'm told by competent medical people, one in 200 pregnancies ends with a down syndrome. A down or some damaged baby. Now, she started, she was, had, the pregnancy began after 40, right in that range. So that, to me, More is, than that, she's just had the baby and she's yeah, 44 okay, years old. Okay, a couple of years into it. Uh, that concerns me. I don't think she thinks right. I mean, that's a little, taking too much of a gamble. That's a racetrack pregnancy. Uh, no, I don't like that. I don't know where, whether you can bring that into an election, but you certainly can think about it. But anything, the other four kids, it's none of your business. It's interesting, though, that the, the discussion now is so reversed, you know, that yeah. the women who work yeah. and who believe in the, that, that they have the right to work yeah, and have that, children yeah, yeah. are the most critical, yeah. and the ultra-conservatives are so forced to support her. It's yeah. a very interesting yeah. debate that's now arisen again, but I think Part of it has to do with the magnitude of the job responsibilities yeah, yeah. and also how you manage it. Yeah. But then she has, a, there's a picture of her hunting with, with the younger daughter, with, yeah. with the dead moose there. Yeah. And yeah. the kid is there with her. Is that? That's Alaska, though. I know. That's Alaska. But is that, should that be the United States? I'm not sure. At least we know that uh, animal... Well, what about these people that go on safaris and they come back proudly with a, a, a leopard's I don't think they do that anymore because they're they not allowed on to. on the country No, they're not allowed to do that anymore. Oh, they But don't. there are, we do know animal lovers, there are many of them, and they are really st of strong opinions. Remember when I was in the city council, yeah. the largest group of people yeah. ever with a, about the horse and buggies? Yeah. So I don't think they're going to approve of this vice presidential candidate yeah. hunting yeah. and doing all the aerial hunting yeah. and everything else that's yeah. going on. So let's get back to but really more she's, serious things. She's with a white ticket. That's very serious. Yeah. So you really think that we're going to have to watch for the race? Yeah, the whole thing. He should win because America has changed that much. If this were running in 1964 or something, it would, you wouldn't be allowed to open the door. Uh, he should win, but he should win by a landslide based on this. This is a catastrophe. And he won't because of color. Are you glad that you went to the convention? Yeah, it was great. It was good yeah. the one moment. Just that? Well, Ricky, and then I put it together with all my, you know, experiences and memories, that one moment. Impossible. Wow. It was something. Oof. <laughs> so you think he's going to win? Yeah, he should win. Yeah. He should. Do you think he will? Well, you've got a lot of those, uh, those Ivy League dandies around them. I'll vote against them. I can't handle those people. Now, this is where your Queen's background comes up. No, There common, are plenty of pe people from sense. Queens that go to Ivy League I schools. I don't care. I don't like them. Oh, stop it. That's no, I don't want them. That. The way they... No, I a went little to an bit. Ivy League school. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> it's that they sashay around. They, they, they're... Uh, oh, they're arrogant. Come on. If there's any rap on them, it's that. 
arrogance. And if there's any rep on McCain, it's that he, he, he shouldn't be running. I think in Ireland they have a role. If you've been working in, a, say, in an institution, particularly a mental institution, for four years, I think it comes down to After that, you can't vote. Are you making that up? No. They, if they you were a working role. in it or if you were a patient in it? Working. Because they figured, no, they figured rightfully so, you're as crazy as the patients after four years. And they, you're, you're, not a, you're not competent to vote. That was when I was living on Kalini Hill in Dublin, Ireland. Now, I don't know if they got it right now. If I had time, I'd go to the phone and find out for you. He was in a prison camp for, what, five years? And I don't think he knows anything about what's going on. Well, let's say all. something that's uncontroversial because we've come to the end of the program. What, I'm what? glad at least that you talked today. Yeah. <laughs> you weren't silent. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it talked too much. Yes. No, never. Never. <laughs> okay. No. Thank you, Jimmy, Don't for coming. Don't wisdom. Thank you for coming. Good. You better thank me. If there are any people you'd like to hear and topics you'd like us to explore, please let me know. You can write to me at CUNY TV, 365 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York, 10016. Or you can go to the website at cuny.tv and click on Contact Us. I look forward to hearing from you.